read. I love surprises. I, I hate when I guess on the first five pages who the killer is, who is going to be the romantic pair, and who is going to marry us home, kill someone. I hate that. Yeah. I love to be surprised. It's so hard. So uh, that's my, my first motivation when I write, to surprise the reader. I okay. want the reader to, to say, hey, I know where she, she, this woman is going, where this woman is leading me, and then it's a false place. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's all I love to do. And the yeah. third one, it's exactly like that. Oh, good. Well, I... Uh, I'm excited to finish reading all three books, and and uh, now I know I will be surprised. With so with the fact that you wrote a trilogy, did you plan on writing a trilogy from the beginning? Did it evolve into that? And then, how do you keep track of everything between the three books? I wanted to write a novel, period. Okay. But if I should tell everything. In one book, uh, it would have at least um, 1,200 pages, I believe. <laughs> so it was impossible. Okay. Uh, after a while, it was clear to me I had to cut at least two. Yeah. When I start to write the second one, same thing. I thought, no, I can't. I'm not going to tell everything here. I can't. It must be, well, I must write a third one. It was mm -hmm. not planned. But... Of course, I need to keep track of everything. So I have a list that I make of characters, what they do, where they live, okay. uh, things they are dressed in from one scene to another. Because one day my editor uh, told me, Adriana, please check the scene. It seems her dress was blue. Two pages. <laughs> <laughs> It was because the day before when I wrote that scene, I was in love with blue. The other day, blue was not my favorite color anymore. Good. So you have to keep track of every detail. Yeah. Uh, and I do uh, a chronology. Uh, this carrot was born uh, there with uh, that age. He went to college. He did that and that. You have to do that. Okay. Uh, it's the dirty part of the job to do research and to keep files about everything so you're not going to get lost. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I get lost writing their names. Uh, a double N is replaced by a double T. You have to use a lot of the, 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 the character to pick things in the end, put the real name, try to find. And the good thing, it's not typewriter anymore. Computer helps a lot. Yeah. But uh, yes, you need to keep track of things. Yeah. So you speak multiple languages. When you write, what language do you write in? Uh, my first book was a mix. I started writing in Portuguese. Okay. I was not that confident in my English. I had a friend, a great friend, he's American, and he decided to help me to translate. After a while, he didn't want to translate anymore. He said I was too picky. Uh, I, I know English. I speak English. I knew what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wanted to change. So we were discussing and he abandoned me. He told me yeah. one day, uh, no, no, no. I'm tired of this. I'm not going to pursue. And I met my editor. And my editor told me, hey, whenever you, you write in English, I clear, it's clear for me. Of course, I need to correct your grammar, some punctuation, things like yeah. that, but write in English. So the second book uh, was born already in English. I write in English. Okay. And it represents another, another problem because I didn't want to push thought about publishing in Brazil. I didn't want to mix my legal career. Yeah. And now I decided to do that. And uh, last year on the hugest Brazilian book fair in Sao Paulo, uh, that is also the Brazilian hugest city, mm -hmm. I've released my first book in Portuguese. Nice. Translated by me. Yeah. Translated by me because I don't trust 
the other translators. <laughs> we used to call translators here in Brazil, translators are traitors. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm now trying with the time I have to translate the second one. Okay. Uh, it's hard. The readers who bought the first one are already asking me about the second one. And I uh, have to confess, I just translate 30 pages of 600. It's going to be a while, and I love new projects. So I'd uh, rather to write a new book than translate it and learn. Yeah. I, I, need, I need more and more challenges always, but I'm going to do that. <laughs> sure. How, so have you noticed your writing changing or evolving from book one to now book four? Yes, yes, you grow you grow up uh, as a writer. Every book you write, yeah. things come easily. Uh, you know the way. You know how to research. Uh, you know how to create better scenarios. Uh, things flow better because it's like everything in life. Uh, first year as a lawyer was tragic. Mm -hmm. I'm on the uh, 28th year of my profession. It's much more easy and and things like are, are just like that. Yes, I've been progressing a lot. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. If you would, so if if you could start your first book again, would you write it in a different way, or would you leave it alone and kind of keep it where it is as its own unique work of art? It's hard because I would change. I, if I, I if I don't stop, I'm always changing, and I'm never going to publish. Yeah. <laughs> because. <laughs> I'm very hard on myself. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, my, I'm my worst reviewer. I'm all like, no, that's not good. You need to be better. Do better, do better, do better. But uh, better is the enemy of publishing. Right. Maybe right. I would do lots of different things, yes. But um, that's the way life is. You have to accept, and it's good. People are liking I'm receiving some words, so I yeah. wasn't the right way. Yeah, no, no, that's <laughs> that's great. So with your with your your writing career right now, and I know you're again you're writing your fourth book, but I'm I'm automatically going to assume you will do like a fifth book and more on that. Are you? Do you think you'll go back into more of like the romance uh, erotica section? Are you gonna? see how this fourth book goes and maybe stick in just the, the mystery and the crime section or, or where do you see your career as a writer evolving? Oh, don't misunderstand me, Yuri. Uh, it <laughs> has sex in this first book. It, does, <laughs> it doesn't have orgies. Okay. I think for now, I didn't discover how to put an orgy. Maybe. Sure. maybe. And I'm trying, I'm trying. I, I never intend to write erotic or a thriller. I just wanted to write something. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it develops by itself. And I don't want to be attached to one genre. Okay. Uh, of all, because my books don't have one genre. They are a mix of everything, thriller, mystery, uh, psychological, and erotica. Mm -hmm. uh, the multiple awards I, I received prove that. I received awards for thriller, for erotica, for misser, for wild card. <laughs> so, right. <laughs> I, I, I don't intend uh, to be attached to one genre. Uh, okay. I want to let it flow. Um, I'm like that. It won't be me writing if I try to follow something. I try to follow my instincts about uh, telling a good story. That's my, yeah. my goal. Okay. I want to tell a good story. That's good. That's good. Well, like I said, so far I'm I'm still in the middle of book one, and and it is a very interesting story so far. I so I want to ask about. So we talked a little bit about your inspiration, and I know in our last interview you mentioned that sometimes you pull from cases that you've come across or kind of worked on. If you had to pick like the weirdest case or the weirdest bit of real life inspiration you pulled for your book, what would that be? Um, my worst case was one of my last family cases. 
-hmm. I promise with that case, I would never work with family issues anymore. I'm too Italian. I'm a hundred percent Italian blood. Yeah. You see, I just speak with my hands. If right, I exactly. my hands, I can. So I'm passionate about yeah. everything. And whenever I, I use it to work with family uh, cases, I, I get, I got too involved. I used to suffer a lot and okay. I have one, one very ugly case. And Lara's story comes a lot from that ugly oh, case. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it was hard for me to deal with that. It was a case that lasts 10 years to be solved. And a lot of Lara comes from that case. Okay. Uh, so it was the worst. I needed to write uh, to put that outside of my chest, I believe. Sure. Okay. Because a uh, lot uh, show me justice. Uh, sorry, justice show me uh, it it doesn't exist a real justice on that case, and things didn't work out very well for all involved people. Yeah. There are no no winners when you put father, mother, and kids in the middle. Yeah. They are yeah. just losers. And I didn't want that anymore, but I use it a lot in my story. Okay, sure. And so, so I decided to go Kutla. Uh, it's much more uh, interesting and it's colder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. With so with your current books right now, have you how have you been marketing them or have you been fortunate so that you haven't because of the fact that they have been winning awards and been featured in many places that you don't have to focus on that as much? Unfortunately, that doesn't exist for an independent author. Yeah. You need to market your you need to write, uh, you need to market your books. Uh, you need to show your books everywhere. I was yeah. always a very discreet uh, person. I didn't like to talk much about my work. I never did a publicity about law. Uh, okay. It's all my clients recommend me for others. I never had to say, hey, buy my, my, my work, I'm great. No, and now I'm doing exactly that. I go to <laughs> social media and they say, hey, mm -hmm. buy my book. Have this author to succeed, Mother Gray, they're receiving a word. And it's very hard to me to do that. I had okay. to fight a lot against all that I believe to do that. Yeah. But if I don't do, they are not going to sell. Of course, I have professional help. I have uh, a wonderful author in the United States that is Maxwell Ivy. You know him. He's mm -hmm. wonderful. He helps my uh, helps me a lot with interviews, and so I have Catherine Tausmilio, another author. She spreads my work because she has that great heart. I have people in Brazil uh, who helps me for almost nothing because they believe in me. They think mm -hmm. one day this guy is going to to go somewhere, and <laughs> I, I'm investing. So, but uh, the the tough job I do all by myself. So yeah. this week I couldn't be in social media because I had lots and tons of legal work right. to do. But usually I'm on social media, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook. I didn't know Twitter existed before I published <laughs> my novels. And uh, it was a surprise when my editor asked me, what are you going to do to promote your books again? Okay. How come? It's yeah. not just to put them on Amazon and they in, on Amazon they're going to sell themselves to them. No, Christ's sake, they are going to be forgotten forever. You, right. you have to show them. It was a surprise, but especially I use social media. Okay. It's very effective. Yeah. Do you plan on doing any book tours um anytime soon, either to promote the third book or the fourth book, whenever it is you finish? Uh, I hope so. Uh, I have to travel to the United States. I've been in my own book fair. Book fair. Yeah. 
yeah. last year uh, I was in New York during this huge fair they have. I hope this year I'm going to do the same.